Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So do check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating the PEG ratio or the price earnings growth ratio, which is a crucial concept in value investing and stock valuation in general. It is a metric that seeks to reconcile the difference between value stocks and growth stocks and incorporate both the current earning potential of a company as well as its growth opportunities. The idea is to divide the price to earnings ratio that the company currently has by some estimate of its earnings per share growth times 100. That would produce a ratio that is interpretable as any multiple, that is, the lower it is, the more undervalued the company is, and the higher it is, the more expensive, the more overvalued a company is, and that can guide value investing decisions or stock valuation decisions. In our example, I have got five stocks from different sectors of the uh, US stock market, Netflix, Apple, Google, that can be classed as tax stocks that we suspect might have quite high PE ratios, as well as two of the more established companies, which are Caterpillar and ExxonMobil, and have retrieved their EPS history at an annual frequency from 2010 all the way to 2022. And we can see that although they all boast quite uh, respectable earnings per share now, they have been growing at a very different rates since 2010. If we look at the stock prices of those five large American companies, we'll be able to calculate their current uh, P2E ratios using the most recent earnings per share data available, but just dividing their stock prices by their earnings per share. We can drag it across and study and compare multiple for those five stocks. We can see that Netflix has the highest of the bunch at uh, 41 approximately, which means that Netflix would take 41 years to pay back its current value in earnings. Again, that's a common simplistic explanation of the price to earnings multiple. Uh, Apple and Google have uh, price to earnings uh, ratios close to 30. Uh, Caterpillar has a price to earnings ratio of around 20 and ExxonMobil has a price to earnings ratio below 10. And this would uh, lead us to deduce if we use conventional uh, price to earnings multiples uh, for investing or for uh, generating signals in terms of which stocks are over or undervalued, that ExxonMobil and Caterpillar are um, less um, overvalued than Netflix, Apple, and Google. However, this um, does ignore the core difference between those three companies, tech stocks that can promise quite substantial growth opportunities in the future, and these two quite well established in all the companies that might not generate a spectacular growth in the future. And for that, the PEG ratio can be used to reconcile those differences and compare those five companies on a more level playing field. Obviously, what many analysts do is just compare price to earnings ratios on some other simple multiples like price to book or price to sales across peers. So for example, across companies from the same sector, uh, they could argue that a price to earnings ratio of 40 for a tax sector is nothing like a price to earnings ratio of 40 that could occur, for example, in the industrial sector or for an energy company. And uh, the design of price to earnings growth ratio, the PEG ratio, is to make multiples more applicable across companies at different stages of their life cycle. For that, let's calculate the historical earnings per share growth over the 12 year period. So how much on average did the earnings grow per year from 2010 until 2022. For that, we can divide the most current um, earnings as of year in 2022 by the 2010 earnings, raise it to the power of one over 12, as we've got 12 years in our sample, subtract one, and that would give us the uh, earnings per share 
growth. Uh, to apply the price earnings growth ratio formula as in here, we need to multiply this earnings growth by 100 so that we have got it in percentages. So we see that Netflix has been growing its earnings for by 30% a year, approximately. And as we drag it across, we'll see that the initial um, idea has uh, been mostly fulfilled, with companies with the greatest price-to-earnings ratios also enjoying, historically at least, the highest earnings growth. Whereas those two stocks that could be deemed value stocks, especially Exxon here with a price to earnings ratio below 10, did show smaller growth, which is more comparable with the growth of the overall economy or the overall uh, market dynamics. And now we can calculate the price to earnings growth ratios by dividing the PE ratio by the earnings growth in percentages, so times 100. And that generates uh, PEG ratios uh, ranging from 1.26 for Apple to 2.01 for Caterpillar. And this produces a very striking picture that's very different to the one given by the PE ratio. Apple and uh, ExxonMobil are uh, stocks with the lowest PEG ratios in our five stock sample, meaning that despite the fact that Apple seems overvalued and Exxon seems undervalued if you look at just the PE ratio, the growth dynamics levels those valuations off, meaning that both Apple and Exxon are the most attractive investments of the bunch. With Netflix, even though it's a stock with the highest, by far, P2E ratio from the sample, has got a closely um, similar PEG ratio of 1.35, whereas Google and Caterpillar have higher PEG ratios, meaning that they might be overvalued, especially Caterpillar with a PEG ratio of 2. And uh, the uh, commonly used cutoff for PEG ratios uh, is 1, with stocks with PEG ratios below 1 are undervalued and above 1 being overvalued. Here we would see that all of our stocks are actually overvalued if we use this heuristic. However, just as with conventional PE or P2B ratios, uh, we uh, will get the most information out of them if we use them in a relative valuation sense, comparing them across stocks that we consider investing in and picking the one with the lowest values, guided by the value investing principle. Uh, however, the PEG ratio has got uh, some applicability concerns. First of all, just as with the PE ratio, uh, its uh, applicability is limited only to the stocks that have got positive um, most recent earnings per share, because if some earnings per share are negative, then you run the risk of obtaining a negative P2 ratio or an undefined growth rate, and that would render this unapplicable. So whenever you're, for example, screening based on PEG ratio, just as with P2E ratio, you are effectively limiting yourself only to stocks with uh, positive earnings per share in the most current um, disclosure. Uh, also, what is quite striking is that the values of the PEG ratio are very dependent on how you measure the growth rate. And this relates this particular valuation heuristic to others that also rely on growth rates. For example, the dividend discount model, which we've got a video on here. Uh, the PEG ratio can be strikingly different if you use a different sample, for example, to estimate the growth rate. If we limit ourselves just to five most recent years, so from 2017 to 2022, and then we'll have to raise it to the power of 1 over 5, we'll see that now Caterpillar, which was the most overvalued stock in the list uh, if we use 12 years worth of data, becomes actually... Uh, the most undervalued if only five years of most recent data is used. This calls for a very careful evaluation of the growth rates and potentially of using some uh, analyst-driven or other way of estimating a forward-looking growth rate for your company. And that's all there is for the interpretation and calculation of price-to-earnings growth rates and its implications for value investing. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions 
for videos and business, finance, or economics, you'll like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel because it supports on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.